Hi, I'm Jack Anzal, and welcome to the Embedded Muse video blog, which is a companion to my free Embedded Muse e-newsletter. Today we're going to do a short look at Saley's new Logic Pro 8, which is an 8-channel logic analyzer. Unusually, each of those channels can also measure analog voltages, rather like an oscilloscope. There are a lot of these USB-based instruments out there, and Saley's offerings are pretty typical. But first, you have to look at the size of this thing. It's unbelievable. It could literally live in the proverbial pocket protector we engineers are so famous for. But first, let's be clear. While it can measure analog channels, it really isn't an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope provides somewhat different functionality, so you need to be aware of this. The oscilloscopes are very different from logic analyzers in that they're constantly sampling. As long as there's a trigger, they're constantly sampling. So if I show the sine wave on my scope and I change the input frequency coming from my signal generator, I don't have to press any buttons to require or anything. It's just acquiring constantly as long as the trigger condition is met. On a logic board or any logic analyzer, really, acquisition starts when you press the start button and then when a trigger event comes along. And then the acquisition stops when the buffer fills up. An oscilloscope is a little bit different. It's acquiring all the time. And as a result, when you turn this trigger knob, you can see at different trigger levels, the sine wave shifts back and forth a little bit. That's not to denigrate the Logic Pro. It's an incredibly useful tool. And it will let you see mixed signal uh, types of events where you're looking at how analog and digital channels react at the same time. It's just not going to replace your oscilloscope. It really is a beautiful thing in a machined aluminum case with the wires connected as shown. It even comes with a carrying case. And unlike a lot of these USB instruments, it does include all the grabber clips that are required in order to actually probe signals. The unit is rated at 500 million samples per second in digital mode with a 50 megahertz analog bandwidth for looking at analog signals. And you can get these with eight channels or with 16 channels. The one I'm looking at today has eight channels. The data sheet says that this thing can sample at 500 million samples per second, which is true, but it does depend upon how many channels you have enabled. Like I think every one of the little USB analyzers that I've looked at, more, the more channels that are on, uh, the, the lower the sample rate. And unfortunately, the algorithm seems to be somewhat arcane and difficult to tease out for this particular device. But Saley does a great job on their website of providing a tool that you can use in order to see what your results will be. So for example, here, you just tell it what channels are going to be enabled and which ones won't be. If I, if, if I turn everything off and say I just have one channel turned on up there, sure enough, down here, 500 million samples per second. As I increase the number of channels, the sample rate then goes down. So they must be doing some kind of multiplexing or something inside the unit. But uh, if you use the tool, it'll be very clear what your acquisition rates will actually be. The company provides UIs for Windows boxes, of course, but also for Linux and even Macintoshes. So it seems sort of appropriate to try this very tiny logic analyzer with a tiny MacBook Air. So here's my test setup. Over here is my HP signal generator. I'm feeding one analog signal into the uh, Logic Pro. The Logic Pro itself is hooked up to a MacBook Air. And, well, here's the Logic Pro. I've also got it connected to this cool little Freescale eval board. And I've written a program on that board which cycles the various GPIO bits over and over. And those are being fed in as digital inputs. The first thing to notice is that I'm powering the logic port from the USB port on the MacBook Air, but it's going through this uh, cool little port pilot device, which actually measures what the current consumption is. And you can see it's only pulling about 316 milliamps at the moment, which is a pretty remarkable number. Uh, in my testing, I found that after three hours of running on the MacBook Air's battery, the, the battery level only went down by about a third. So you could actually run this for quite a while. That could be a really portable development lab. I, I could even see setting up a development lab on an airplane's tray table. But they'd probably bust you for being a terrorist. Here's a user interface that comes with the device. You can see it's very spare, clean, very easy to navigate around. If you want to configure the channels, you just 
press this button and here we can set channels be, to be either digital or analog or even both if you wish. Here I've set channel everything to be digital except channel 4 which is also measuring analog signals. To start an acquisition you just press start. Voila! Here we can see it. You see a number of channels of digital information. Here's that channel 4 which is analog. A nice little sine wave coming from the signal generator. And of course another digital channel. If you want to zoom in or out it's just pressing the arrow keys. You can see it's extremely fast and responsive. It's easy to set cursors. You just click on the cursor buttons and then drag these things out onto the screen. You can set up two cursors. There. And then, whoops, right there. Then you can see the usual delta information, information and all the rest of it that you were used to with any other logic analyzer. Scrolling around is very, very fast. Much faster than I've found on most of these other little USB logic analyzers. You set up trigger conditions on the digital channel only. You can't set triggers on the analog by selecting this little icon here next to each channel. As you can see, you can set rising, falling edges. You can even set pulse widths. So in other words, it has to be a pulse that's either greater than or less than some number. And you can see these can be pretty enormous numbers or pretty tiny at the same time. The user interface is quite fast and extremely intuitive. I like it a lot. The Logic Pro also comes with protocol analyzers, which of course is pretty common nowadays. And the provided ones at this point include usual serial RS-232, I2C, and SPY. Uh, others are apparently coming, and what's really nice is that they make an SDK available, so he can actually de develop your own custom protocol analyzer. Other features I like are the plus or minus 10 volt input range for the analog and a 12-bit A to D converter, which is more than you get with most. This is not cheap, but $479 for the 8-bit version and $599 for the 16-input version. So it's expensive compared to some of the other offerings, but this is a very well-constructed unit. The hardware works perfectly and the UI is excellent. So there you have it, a quick review of Saley's Logic Pro. As we do from time to time, I'm going to give this unit away to some lucky winner of this month's contest, which ends on June 30th of uh, 2015. So go to the website to enter. If you've missed the contest, go to the website anyway, because we're always giving away tools that are useful for embedded developers. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out the website for more than a thousand articles about better ways of building embedded systems.